I know that when preparation meets opportunity is when you end up with a career. But you got to have both. You've got to be prepared and you've got to keep your ears and eyes open for those kinds of opportunities. That's what I know. Welcome to Casting Actors Cast, insights for actors on acting in the business of show. Casting director Jeffrey Dreisbach takes you behind the scenes and reveals secrets to a successful acting career. You can find out more on the web at castingactorscast.com. Please enjoy, like, and share Casting Actors Cast. Now, here's your host, Jeffrey Dreisbach. Well. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of Casting Actors Cast. I'm Jeffrey Dreisbach. I'm a casting director with McCorkle Casting in New York. And this is Casting Actors Cast Insights for Actors on Acting and the Business of Show. So glad to have you here. How's your day going? How's your week been? My week has been just absolutely crazy. <laughs> I don't like to reflect too much on the past, but this has been one amazing week where we're working on several projects at once, and uh, we've had some really amazing meetings with potential new production company looking to do some feature films and some television work, so that's kind of exciting, and we're sort of holding our breath to see if that comes through. In the meantime, we've been casting um, some regional theater and a couple of off-Broadway shows simultaneously. Just kind of crazy, and, you know, I wouldn't have it any other way. Certainly beats the alternative to hoping that work will come in. You see, I think it's interesting that a lot of actors might not understand that casting directors have a very kind of parallel life with actors because we are also looking for work all the time. We're putting ourselves out there. We're interviewing for jobs, and uh, so it's not dissimilar to an actor hitting the pavement and looking for opportunities that are out there. One of the blessings, of course, that we have in working with Pat McCorkle at McCorkle Casting is that she's kind of been doing this for a very long time and has a, a whole um, history of impeccably good work and fantastic taste, if I do say so myself, because, you know, we've been married for over 20, I think, I think it's like 28 years now, so... I'm very proud of uh, our association um, and very proud of the work that she has done over the years and continues to do um, just amazing, amazing work. So I've had a really great time casting now, about nine years. I've been actually in the trenches every day uh, in the office working with Pat and Katya and Nathan. We all are in agreement that this is an excellent time to be an actor because there are a lot of opportunities that are out there. So this is that moment in the podcast where I sincerely thank you for being a listener to Casting Actors Cast. If you're just new, if you're just joining us, I'm very excited to have you here. Please do yourself a favor and do me a favor if you would, and that is go to castingactorscast.com. That's all one word, Casting Actors cast.com and there you have a user form that you can click out and if you click that user form just letting me know that you're there you don't have to send me a note or whatever or if you have some feedback I'm happy to get some feedback or if you want to say some nice things too that would be awesome you can uh, once you click on that form you will have access to a free and I mean free 100 page workshop book called Conversation Pieces Out of the Studio, the voiceover workbook for professional actors. And I think if you do that, you can get that PDF, download it if you want. You can print it out if you want. It's all yours to use as you will. I think it's a really helpful guide to what it is to do voiceover work, but it gives you real practical hands-on information, exercises, things that you can do, clever ideas to putting together a demo reel, that sort of thing. So don't miss out, but I also have it there because I just want to hear from you. I'd just like to hear from people all over the world have been sending me notes and emails, and I just uh, I just love it. It's been really a great, great journey. So that's my shameless promotional announcement for something for free. <laughs> so let's talk today a little bit about what I call creative 
collaboration, connection. It's no question that putting together any project in the entertainment business is really a collaboration. There's rarely, if any time, that one person is solely responsible for the entire project. In fact, I can't even think. Even a one-person show, <laughs> whether it's a stage piece or whatever, has a lot of people involved in putting it together and making it an effective production. But what I want to spend a little time is kind of flipping the focus just a little bit to talk about the casting director point of view. Um, many times actors are, and rightly so, they're very focused and consumed on doing their work and their day-to-day, -day, and they are the CEOs of their own company. But I'm going to ask you to kind of take a little bit of a leap of faith with me as we talk about the casting side of things when we talk about the creative collaboration connection. And let's talk first about television. It's not unusual for a producer to hire a casting director to put together the actors for a television pilot, for example. Now, for those of you who are not familiar, the pilot is the initial episode that gets put together. Um, that episode is then shopped around to the various networks or cable uh, outlets and tries to drum up interest so that that pilot becomes the very first episode of a series, of a television series. So the producer will hire the casting director to put together the initial cast of that particular project. For example, when Pat was hired by Showtime to put together the pilot of Californication, which ended up garnering us uh, an Emmy nomination, Pat was hired to find the principal characters for that particular television pilot. Now, this is also true for a lot of casting directors, is that they are only invested in putting together the lead characters for that particular pilot. The week-to-week -week or episode-to-episode -episode is oftentimes given to a casting director outside of that initial casting director that gets hired to do the pilot. So you might have if you look at credits, and I hope you do that, I hope you scrutinize the credits on any television series that you'll see original cast by, and then you'll see the casting director who might be doing that particular episode, the day players or the guest starring or, or guest appearances. Those kinds of things are often done by a different casting director altogether that's hired to do the week-to-week -week or, or episode-to-episode -episode casting. I just thought that was kind of interesting. So the collaboration is that a casting director might have a lot of influence and participation in who the leads are for that particular TV series. But then they oftentimes will give up that responsibility to another casting person. So the principles are done by one casting director and then the upkeep or the per episode is done by another casting directors. That has to be and thought of as a creative collaboration connection. Many times, it's a little bit different in film. What will happen is a casting director gets hired by the producer, and that producer will make a decision about whether that casting director is able to cast the entire project, meaning, depending on the demands of the script, one casting director to cast the entire film. Now, often that will exclude doing the extras, the background uh, work. Sometimes it'll be just the principals are hired by the casting director. And then and maybe uh, another casting director is jobbed in to do the local hiring for that particular film. Again, that becomes a kind of casting collaboration as well. And when that happens, then you get shared credit. In other words, you'll look at the screen credits and you'll see additional casting by, or you'll see multiple names for casting. And that is simply a way in which producers can make sure that they have laid out all of the strategy they need to put this particular project together. So we'll see a shared casting credit, or you'll see additional casting by in the role at the end. Getting single card placement at the top of the picture is, of course, the casting director's dream, and that's often what's negotiated for, especially if they do the bulk or the majority of the casting. 
there are those different issues involved in theater creative collaboration. The theater, whether it's a regional theater, for example, let's just take uh, a regional theater sort of concept first. The casting director will oftentimes, in our situation, we get hired by that theater to cast maybe some of the principal roles, not the entire project. Now, some theaters will hire us, some regional theaters will hire us to do the entire cast. But many times, the regional theaters are only looking for the four leads or the four major characters, or if there's some unusually challenging casting that needs to take place, they will come to New York and look for actors there because the the pool is rather rich and deep in terms of finding that talent. So they'll hire uh, an independent casting director to look for those specific characters. Now, many of the theaters, regional theaters that we do casting for, we are hired for the entire season. And we are paid based on a set fee that is spanning the entire season. So whatever the needs of that theater are, we are there to fulfill that obligation. The interesting thing that has been happening, and this has happened a little more frequently than I would like, and I want to share this concept with you because we are, you know, the, our point of view today is about looking at the casting um, and what casting directors go through. If, and this has happened, we've cast projects out of town. For example, we cast for the Barrington stage. And there have been some productions at Barrington that additional or outside producers have come in and say, gosh, I really love that production. I want to, maybe I want to take that production and I want to produce it either at another venue or I want to bring that production to New York. I want to bring that production to Broadway. What the problem becomes is that producer, in order to um, get their new project on the boards, whether they want to put it in an off-Broadway venue or whether they wanted to bring it to a full Broadway venue or even if they want to take it to another theater or major town or take it on tour or whatever it is, many times the producers don't consider the original casting as part of the collaboration. It's really fascinating. And it's challenging for us because if that producer takes that original cast we believe rather strongly that we should be given some kind of consideration for assembling that original cast that now you're taking and putting it in your newly produced production. And so we had this fight actually a little bit ago last week. I'm not going to mention names. I'm not going to mention projects. But it was really clear from Pat's point of view that this particular production shouldn't be given to another casting director if, in fact, the majority of the leads, you know, five out of the seven leads, for example, are from the original production. And Pat's question to the producer was, did you re-audition these actors? And the producer said, or the general manager, rather, of this production said, no. And Pat said, well, if you're taking that production and you're using the same costumes? Yes. And you're using the same lighting designer? Yes. And you're compensating the set designer for you doing the set that you liked so much and that you're going to be using in your production? Yes. Then how is it you don't feel that the original casting, the collaboration that the casting director had with the director in terms of putting this production together should be omitted from any kind of consideration. Now, I can tell you, frankly, that we're not talking about money, although there is a financial component to it, that shouldn't we share a piece of that success of that particular project. I mean, lighting designers get paid for their design. Costume designers get additional compensation for their design, for their particular uh, work. Wouldn't casting directors be considered the designing of actors? Now, you might disagree with this, and, and I appreciate that there is some disagreement and discussion about this, but I think it's worth noting that it's not just about the money. We would also love to be given credit. We work really hard in collaboration with the director to put together a good project, a project that has some significance, that 
fulfills the dream of the producer and the director? And why should we not be given some kind of consideration? From the casting director's point of view, we believe quite strongly that acknowledgement of our work continues to be a struggle that, frankly, we don't think should be there. We think it should just be a natural course of events that if you contribute to the creative project in a way that makes a d demonstrable example of a successful project, shouldn't we be given that kind of consideration? Now, I want to take us out of the casting director kind of point of view, and let's shift that to actors, because currently, as of this broadcast, there's an equity strike going on, and it's involving new Broadway show development, specifically theater labs. And for those of you who aren't familiar with this, there are times when readings of new plays are done here in New York and elsewhere. Uh, we get hired to do a lot of readings. And these are, uh, most of the time, they're like new plays or new projects. And the producers and the writers, whatever, are interested in seeing if this can be developed into a full-scale production, maybe even a Broadway production. And so these actors will get hired to read and or even maybe do a 29-hour reading, which is an equity-allowed set of rules about doing 29 hours of rehearsal and performance time. And there's a specific number involved that actors get paid and casting directors get hired, and we really oftentimes will get asked to bring in high-profile names or people that have um, serious credits and maybe they're well-known. You know, those kinds of requests happen all the time, even for new play readings, because if you can attach a bigger name to that particular project, it has more cachet, and maybe more producers who have money uh, might be even more motivated to invest money in that particular production. But this equity strike is an interesting concept, and frankly, I can argue kind of both ways. And I wanted to share this with you kind of briefly, but I wanted to make the final point. In brief, isn't it true that the actor who is hired to do new play development in the form of a reading, whether it's a 29-hour reading or whether it's a, a lab, that they are actually contributing to the overall success of that production should it become successful? The actor's contribution during a rehearsal period, collaborating with the writer, collaborating with the director, that kind of collaboration, the argument goes, deserves consideration. Financial consideration. It should be credit given. The actors are on strike because they feel it's, they have been taken advantage of, that they are right there in the trenches helping to develop a really, you know, a, 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 the new concept of this particularly fantastic new show, don't they deserve some of the credit? Now, the other side of that argument from producers might be, well, if you're going to be charging us more money or what is in effect what we would call residuals, where we continue to pay the original actors who originated the role, then we're probably going to be less likely interested in doing this kind of lab in the first place. Wouldn't it be better to just see if we can develop a project at a regional theater and then think about bringing it in? And that is an alternative. The argument goes that if you're making it cost more for me to do this kind of work, then frankly, I'm going to do less of it. Now, I'm not sure that that's our argument that holds, but I am sure that this is a kind of contentious time that we are in, as you well know, both in the United States, both politically. There's a lot of divide in our country currently, and it seems that this is another point of contention as it relates to actors' equity and producers. Now, again, I'm not trying to take a stand on this. I'm just saying it's such a fascinating situation that casting directors have to fight for their little piece of the pie and, and their contribution, and actors are doing the same when it comes to their participation in some of those projects. Where do you stand? What do you think? Is it fair to producers? Is it then unfair to actors? I will say that the last time 
this con particular contract was up for negotiation was over 12 years ago. So a considerable amount of time has passed with no changes. And that is why currently Actors' Equity is currently on strike. I hope that this has been interesting for you today. I think it's valuable to sometimes take another point of view, looking through another lens in relation to, you know, show business, <laughs> so that looking at what casting directors have to go through is not dissimilar to what actors have to go through on a regular basis. Information is power, and I would love to hear back from you. What do you think? What do you think is the most expeditious way? Ooh, good word. What, what is the most expeditious way for this problem to get resolved? How do you feel it's going to affect your work as we proceed forward in the business of show? I hope you've had a great time listening, and I hope that you make it a regular part of your week to tune in to Casting Actors Cast. Thank you so very much. I'm Jeffrey Dreisbach, and as I just said, this is Casting Actors Cast. You've been listening to Casting Actors Cast with host Jeffrey Dreisbach. Find out more at castingactorscast.com and let us know if you would like us to cover topics you're interested in. Thanks for listening. I'm Matthew DeSarno.